Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about design of longitudinal joint. So, we should be knowing what do you mean by a design of a longitudinal joint and the circumferential joint. So, mainly it is related to the boiler shell applications. So, practically it is not possible to design a big cut size boiler shell. Example here, I want to take this particular water bottle, assume that this is cylindrical structure. So, if I want to design these kind of smaller components, the entire component can be designed by using a single, you know, like a uh, metal but in case if it is uh, of bigger diameter I am talking about this diameter in case if it is bigger in, in approximately this is uh, only uh, 5 to 10 uh, uh, centimeter in case uh, if it is uh, uh, like 3 meters 4 meters diameter means and even length say for example 10 meters means uh, it is not possible uh, to uh, uh, to uh, manufacture as a single component so such times uh, what we will be doing means uh, we will be manufacturing part by part and we are calling it as a panel by panel and later uh, we will be making a small small cylindrical part and we will be uh, assembling all these cylindrical parts here for making the small cylindrical part uh, we will be going with the uh, uh, butt joint butt joint is nothing but if this is the plate means uh, this plate I will be butting at the edges and by using the cover plates I will be doing after making multiple cylinders I will be inserting the cylinder 1 with cylinder 2 there I will be going with the lap joint so in this video we will be discussing about uh, the uh, uh, longitudinal joint that is about the butt joint design procedure we will be discussing we will see that first one is uh, the thickness of the boiler shell first of all we know that the thickness of the boiler shell is determined by using a thin uh, a cylindrical formula what is the formula is t is equal to p into d divided by 2 sigma t into uh, n net plus 1 m as the corrosion allowance in case if you see a new uh, machine then we need not to think about uh, this uh, additional allowances uh, because uh, uh, if it is uh, having a more salty content after some 2-3 uh, months of uh, maintenance then uh, these kind of uh, allowance will be considered where T is nothing but thickness of the boiler shell capital P is the steam pressure in boiler D internal diameter of the boiler shell sigma T is the permissible tensile stress and uh, uh, efficiency of the launch rate is the NL and what is the point to be noted means uh, the thickness of the boiler shell uh, should not be less than 7 mm it should be greater than 7 mm the efficiency of the joint may be uh, taken from the data handbook usually in data handbook uh, the efficiency uh, value is uh, uh, given recommended as per the diameter and moving to the the second design procedure uh, that is the thing but uh, the diameter of the rivets so after finding out the thickness of the boiler shell as we know that this boiler shell longitudinal design uh, what we discussing about the th thickness should be uh, greater than uh, 7 mm so after finding out the thickness uh, where the diameter of the rivet hole may be determined by using the unbinds empirical formula uh, this uh, formula is capital D or small d because we should be knowing what is this d that is the diameter of the rivet hole uh, which is equal to 6 square root of t so if the, the thickness is greater than 8 mm then we can go with this particular formula in case the thickness is less than 8 mm then other design should not be recommended because uh, that ultimately land up with the failure so usually we will be going with the thickness uh, greater than 7 mm technically speaking 8 mm we have to go so by using this thickness value only by using this uh, unwins empirical formula uh, we will be finding out the time from the rivet pool and usually for uh, uh, solving uh, the uh, the problem or uh, for do, doing the designs uh, all the designs is mainly based on uh, the diameter of the rivet hole uh, the difference between the rivet hole uh, and the rivet diameter is almost the same since the hole should be little bigger than the rivet then only the rivet wing can be inserted inside the the drill link of what we have uh, already made in the plates so the tolerance level may be usually is plus or minus and usually plus only uh, 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 and sometimes it is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and uh, if the thickness as is uh, said if the thickness is less than 8 mm then the diameter of the rivet hole may be calculated by equating the shearing resistance of the rivets to the crushing resistance ultimately we land up with the failure results only so that is why that is not recommended and third one is the thing but uh, uh, pitch of the rivets which is very very important so the pitch of the rivet can be calculated by using the formula uh, pi by 4 t square 2 n2 plus n1 into uh, capital S suffix S divided by 2 uh, T S T plus D 
so here the d is nothing but the diameter of the rivet uh, but for all the calculation we will be considering the diameter of the rivet hole only so uh, what is this uh, n1 and uh, n2 that is nothing but the number of rivets and number of uh, rivet 1 and rivet 2 that is what the margin we will be finding out and this is nothing but the gauge line uh, distance that is from the reference axis to the edge of the plate and we can call it as a margin also and uh, these uh, 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 formula is available in the data handbook and even the values are found in the data handbook uh, page number 63 and table number v2 and the fourth one is nothing but uh, the distance between the rows of uh, rivets. So for the equal number of rivets, uh, more than one row for lap joint and butt joint, the distance between the uh, row of rivet PB uh, should not be less than 0.33P plus 0.67D for the zigzag riveting I am talking and for the 2D for the chain riveting. Uh, for the joints in which the number of rivets in outer rivets is half the number of rivets in inner rows uh, and if the inner rows are chain riveted, then the distance between the outer rows and the next row should not be less than 0.33P plus 0.67R 2D which is which well as greater. So accordingly we will be taking and we should be uh, greater than the 2D. And next one is uh, for the joints in which the number of rivets in outer rows is half the number of rivets in inner rows. And if the inner rows are zigzag riveted, then the distance between the outer rows and the next rows shall not be less than 0.2p plus 1.15d. We need not to worry about all these formulas because all these formulas are available in the design data handbook and the equation numbers is listed in the numerical sections. So for which equation and which page number, chapter number, equation number, everything is mentioned in the problems numeric. Problems and the distance between the rows in which there are a full number of rivets that is zigzag uh, shall not be less than 0.165p plus 0.67t uh, and the next one is the thing but the uh, thickness of the butt strap where we have uh, many formulas uh, starting for the starting from the ordinary chain riveting uh, then uh, single butt straps uh, where uh, the uh, for every ordinary rivet, the outer row should be omitted and even for uh, uh, double butt straps of equal width having ordinary riveting, uh, chain riveting and the butter, uh, double butt straps of the equal width having uh, every alternate rivet in the outer row being omitted, you can able to see the formula. So the first case is T1 equal to 1.12 by T, second case 1.12 by T into P minus T divided by P minus 2T and third case 0.62 by T and fourth case is 0.62 by T into P minus T divided by P minus 2T. So these um, are the new formulas that is uh, included in case of the uh, the butt straps. Uh, in case it is, I mean, for the double strap. In case it is single strap, means uh, uh, then we can go with uh, only the one set of equation. And uh, for unequal width or uh, butt straps, uh, the thickness of the butt straps are uh, 0.75 t and 0.625 t. And the margin usually is taken as 0.11 uh, sorry 1.5 t, which was already discussed in the previous uh, uh, cases. So with this, I'll be winding up uh, this particular video uh, where uh, these uh, five, six designs we need to keep when we uh, do the design of the uh, circumferential uh, joint. Uh, sorry, uh, longitudinal uh, lab joint. Uh, so longitudinal butt joint. So just remember uh, these uh, steps. That is. Uh, thickness of the boil shell, diameter of the rivet, pitch of the rivet, distance between row of rivets, thickness of the butt joint, uh, butt strap and the margin. So these are all the things we have to remember for the design of uh, longitudinal butt joint for your boiler, design of a longitudinal butt joint for your boiler. Thank you.